Hello everyone. So if you're watching this video, it's probably because you're interested in how to make three-dimensional voxel models using Python alone. Maybe even manipulate a three-dimensional model with Python and then port it to a different platform like WebGL and JavaScript. So if you have been searching for that, you may have come to the right place. I say that because VoxelMap is quite a minimalist program. Uh, the source code for it is very simple. It is still at its nascent stages. And so I've made it a open source type of project. Uh, you are more than welcome to make meaningful contributions to it. And uh, this, as well, you may have read, you're reading from here, this project is also participating in Oktoberfest 2022, not 2021, this is a typo. Uh, if you'd like to uh, start, I suggest reading the contributing document, which has some really interesting guidelines into how to, uh, you know, fork the project, make contributions, uh, how to run unit tests as well, which are very important. And so as I mentioned, it being a part of Hacktoberfest has the Hacktoberfest label. So if your pull requests are merged, you're, it will count as a contribution to, uh, to, the, to the festival, right? The festival. And of course, if uh, you'd like to propose or point out some bugs on the on this project, you're more than welcome to do so under the issues, even like if you would like to uh, propose a an enhancement, you can do so as well by clicking the green button and submitting your issue as an enhancement type of proposal thing. And of course, if you were, have also found a a bug and are clever enough to provide for a for a patch right away, and then of course uh, it being valid, if it's valid, then it will be be merged. Uh, to the base repository, which is this one. All right, so without further ado, we'll just start by showing you some of the, how to use this uh, this package and some of the applications of it. All right, so the, we're gonna start from scratch, from the very, very simplest uh, type of thing, which would be basically, uh, let me just clear this out. Using the terminal, the Python terminal, sorry, using Python, in the terminal. And actually before doing that, sorry about that, uh, you may need to install VoxelMap and installation because this is part already has been deployed in as the Python package manager. Installation is as simple as just typing pip install VoxelMap. So just type pip install Why do I have to write? Okay. So pip install voxel map. I have already installed it on my system. And you may need to do that to, to you know to use it first. And that's how you basically install. And now if you already have voxel map but you want to upgrade it to the late upgrade to the latest version, which is always recommended. So we have some more interesting features with newer versions and potentially some bugs that have been already patched. So just uh, to add the upgrade flag to it, pip install and box in the end. And that will upgrade to the last latest version. Okay, so after you've done that, we can, I'll just start and show you the first, some usage examples that are very simple, just running, um, just using the Python terminal. Okay, the so first thing, because we have already installed it, we're just gonna import boxer map SVM. We're also going to be using the NumPy library, so we're going to import it as NP. And now the first example is just going to be, we're going to draw a third order array or three dimensional array, quote unquote, which will have values from zero, no, not the ones. So we'll have randomly generated integer values which would be either zeros or ones. And it will be a three by three by three, as I mentioned, array. So if you wanna see it, we can just type A again. And this is what it, the output is of that array. You can see it's an array of just numbers, which are either zeros or ones. And we're gonna start using our voxel map, uh, our voxel map library now. 
the first thing we'll do is we we'll incorporate this array into a model uh, structure or constructor, not a constructor, a model structure, which is a part of voxel map. So we're going to type model just to define that variable dot model will be equal to a voxel map library, the model structure of that library, which is called model. Okay. And we're going to be incorporating the array to that. So that's the first step. And if you just, you know, type model, it's just an object at this point. Model has some interesting functions. And of course, the function you're looking for is probably the drawing function. It's just, it will just draw uh, the array as a three-dimensional object, as a three-dimensional voxel object. And it has the spe a very specific coloring scheme, as you may have checked, you have, may have seen. This is actually a cool color map, which has a gradient coloring scheme where uh, the gradient goes from the center, from the core, uh, to the exterior of the three-dimensional structure. So that's why we call it, I have called that type of coloring scheme nuclear. So if you type nuclear, and it's defaulted to nuclear, you know, you'll get the same thing. We can, of course, change the color map as well, if you'd like. And for that, we need to import, import the color maps from matplotlib. So we're going to import CM like this. And now, uh, this object also has a grad gradient map function, which can be used to define that color map. So if we want to define it, let's tr just do a hot color map, which is also a built-in color map from Python, from Matplotlib. And we can maybe even add like a transparency to it, make it 50% transparent. Okay, and after that, we also do a nuclear depth draw. So you can see that it's semi-transparent and it's using the hot color map now. We could also make the array a little larger. So we'll just call B equal, actually, let's just go back to A. Yeah. And let's make these values larger. And now we are, uh, we have to redefine the model again because you know we just made change to arrays and we need to input the array the new array again into this model variable so we do that and then we can now draw it we can define the color map as maybe a rainbow color map if you'd like increase the decrease the transparency make it more opaque model draw see that this is the, a rainbow color map. It doesn't look quite like a rainbow because it's not so many voxels really and it does it from the internal to the outside. But that's basically what, you know, there's some of the capability, really, really simple capability of this Python library. Now, of course, it can get more complicated than this, and we may just uh, need to use, say, text file instead of writing things from the terminal, which is what I will show you now to show you some of the more complicated type of features. So what we're going to do is we're going to quit the terminal. We're going to create a new file called, what do we call it? What do we call it? Mm because we have been working with arrays, let's call it. Actually, let's call it demo instead. Demonstration. And now we're going to open it with Visual Studio Code. It's going to be an empty file. We're going to import voxel map, which is our library. We're going to import also NumPy. 
and just because I know we will need it, because we've used it here, or we may may use it later, I am gonna take um, an import CM, which is a color map. Okay, so I will be show. I've already shown you some of the very simple uh, drawing capabilities of three-dimensional arrays. I believe it may be time to show you something a little bit more complicated. Let's show you how to import a three-dimensional file, which was created uh, with a voxel editor, and how to import it to this voxel map library to be manipulated as an array and then drawn again with matplotlib. All right, so for that, I will be copying a file I had here of a dog. Is it a file? No, it's not here. Okay, we're going to copy some doc files to our desktop. You can see them here. Okay. Now we're going to open the Goxel file with Goxel. And Goxel is a, a three dimensional voxel editor as I mentioned if you want to yeah there you go oops so yeah a three dimensional voxel editor you're more than welcome to look at it I believe that it's also multi-platform so you can install it on your Windows, Mac, or Ubuntu Linux operating system, which is actually what I'm running right now. Right, so it's a multi-platform, it's great, it's op also open source. And so that's what I just opened, and I opened this dog file I created. And you can see the dog, it's very, looks very friendly, very cool. And we're gonna add some stuff to the dog. We're gonna alter it. We're gonna add uh, some wings to it. Okay. Yeah, maybe leveled with the head. Maybe something like this. Yeah, that looks nice. And yeah, Goxel is very easy to handle. To I, I know that there's uh, artists that use uh, Goxel. And it's a very easy program to, to handle, in my opinion. That looks hopefully that looks like wings <laughs> not so much but maybe if I decrease this and add some blocks again oh. okay so I'm just gonna extrude this again and hopefully that looks more like a wing type of thing. Maybe if I extrude a little bit like this. Okay, so now that's like a Pegasus, dog Pegasus type of hybrid. Okay, so we save it. And I'm gonna also export this as a text file because that's actually what voxel map can process. Yeah, replace. It processes a text, text files that are created from Goxel, not the ex not exactly the the Gox file itself. All right, so we're just gonna close it, and I'm gonna show you some capabilities of it. Okay, so Voxel Map also has a, a an additional structure which is called Goxel, and so we're gonna define it here as a Gox, 
I'm going to call voxel map as bm of the coxel. And coxel takes one input, which would be the name, the, the path really of the text file that we generated from coxel. And we created it as dog.text because we are in also in the same directory as where the file is, we just write the name. Otherwise, we have to write the path. Okay, so after you've done that, um, that basically will uh, create the Goxel object. It will not create the the three dimensional representation in array form yet, and so that's what we're gonna do. That's what we can do by just typing. Maybe create an array and use the Goxel ob object that we have generated here, the docs.txt file, and type import file. That's it. And that should actually be the output for that, which the what array is, is actually a numpy array. It should be an array with integers. And the integers, of course, are the specific uh, voxel blocks that are shown, that are listed on the text file. So it may be worth to really show you that doc text file and what it looks like. You can see that the last entry, last column entry is the color for the specific block in the XY Zeta space, which are the other columns. And the color is defined in hexanumerical form, hexadecimal form. Now, if you recall the Goxel structure we made of the dog, it had three main colors. And so the three main colors, there will, that means that there's only uh, four different hexadecimal types here. FF, which is, I believe, completely white. Uh, I don't know what color this is. So we're going to be, in order to be for them to be com converted to specific integers, we need to define them here. And so that's what we are going to do, actually. Because this will not give you anything. Because there isn't really no dictionary or hash map that trans that takes and lists all these different colors and connects them to a specific integer. So we're going to have to do that here. And of course, this may be a kind of like a tedious thing. So maybe a an enhancement that you can define, have the, the program define, give it or give, give it arbitrary or ordered numbers to specific colors that it finds, right? So maybe actually a really nice enhancement to have on featured versions so that we don't have to do this update colors thing that I'm showing you right now. Nonetheless, this is how we do it as of version 1.2.1. .1. So the first one, as I mentioned, would be the, the color itself. And the second one would be the integer that we want to define it to. And now I'm going to populate the rest. I'm going to pause the video and populate the rest uh, so that it makes everything faster from this you know, text file. OK. And so that should give us the array. So if we you want to see it at this point, it should be a three-dimensional array. So we can just run the demo as is. And, and you can see right that uh, we have numbers from 0 to 4 where zeros are empty space and the non-zero non-zero integers are the specific block types of the specific colors. And what you see here of course is printing the the hash map and defining each mapping each of the integers to specific color. We have some repetitions because it, the hash map usually comes with some predetermined colors as default. 
uh, but that shouldn't really be a problem. This is just so that we don't run into some null error. Okay, so that's basically what we what we've done. We have taken the text file, we have quickly processed it to a three-dimensional array form. So now, what can we do with that array? Well, we can use uh, the other utility which I showed you before, which is the model uh, structure from the voxel map library, and we can input you incorporate array the array variable to that model and then we can later of course use the drawing utility from that object to draw the array in three dimensions so now we can just uh, run again and you'll see now a tilted <laughs> tilted three dimensional three dimensional dog Right, so this may be also a a patch that can be worked on, and maybe you can submit this as a bug uh, to the issue section of this repository. That it doesn't really map it completely the way that we sh that we would want to see it. And we can do some just apply a bandaid of sorts by just uh, you know swapping the axis of this array maybe uh, represent it let's see this is actually what I'm doing here Just swapping some axis and so if I run it again you'll see that it's, oh, it's now it's in another orientation that's funny maybe one zero two Right, so it may be uh, even like applying the bandaid. It's it's actually better that you may that you may need to make uh, changes to the to this draw utility of the model constructor. Where is the model? Oh yeah, of the model constructor of the voxel map library. That's the way that it needs to be approached, not with like a you know some very weak uh, bandaid like I'm trying to do here. Like maybe. You know, and swapping some axes and transposing. Right. And nonetheless, uh, at least this is what you get, right? So you got, we got a dog from a Goxel file. We imported it uh, to a text file, and then we took that text file and processed it with our Voxel map library. We defined assign each of the colors from the doc text file to a specific integer and that then got processed to an array then we incorporated that that higher order array to the model and we drew it now i'm going to show you something a little bit more specific and we can actually besides drawing it with the default nuclear color map gradient option, we can also use what I've termed a voxels coloring option. And what voxels coloring will do is it'll basically assign a specific color for each of those numbers. Now that hasn't been done before. What we've done is actually the opposite for the text file, but we haven't really assigned any specific color for the draw in matplotlib itself. So how do we do that? Colors for uh, the matplotlib voxel draw are also defined in a, in a dictionary or hash map, which in this case is actually called model.hashblocks. That's the name for, uh, that's the predetermined or uh, defined name uh, for the model uh, structure if you're curious All right, so the first input is just the integer that we want to define a color for and the next one is the actual color we want to define so let's say I just want to make it built-in magenta from Python and I'm gonna make it uh, gonna make it a little a little light in, in terms of uh, opaqueness or transparency 
Now, of course, there's four different integers, one, two, three, four. Let's just keep, uh, we can also define colors in hexanumerical form. We just need to add the pound sign for Python. So that would be white. That would be black. But actually make it, let's make it more interesting because I added magenta here. So I'll make this yellow. And the wings, uh, which color should they be? Uh, let me think about that. <laughs> let's keep the wings white and let's make the eyes cyan. And let's make the eyes really opaque. Um, let's make actually everything opaque because everything actually defaults alpha one is the default. And so that means completely opaque, right? So let's just make the magenta, the whole body of the dog a little bit transparent. That's kind of, it's probably gonna look kind of cool. So now because we have also incorporated, not, we're using this voxels draw, it will draw it accordingly to the colors we define. So now you can see, you get a kind of like dog, you can see the body of the dog is semi-transparent, you can see through the dog, but the wings are completely opaque and so are the eyes and the tongue. Right, so it's pretty cool, cool dog. I'll probably, I'll probably use it as an icon to the next uh, voxel map version because it looks really, really nice. <laughs> okay. Right, uh, so that was the Goxel example. I will also show you the, besides this Goxel application, I'll show you an application which you may be also looking for or you were like really more interested in, in using when you were watching this video or when you found this video, which would be basically mapping a two-dimensional image to three-dimensional type of structure. And this is something that I may have shown, that I have shown in one of my videos some time ago uh, but I believe that I didn't do it much justice. I think that I I should have made it, I should have simplified it a little more. And this is what I intend to do here. I developed a whole, a function for it. And I have to find it in my library, in this library, so that you can, you can use it with ease. So let's see, how do we start? How do we start? Yeah, let's start with actually just just like simple explanation for it. Uh, but the main thing is just two dimensional image would be mapped by 3D by just making the third dimension correlate, we correlate the third dimension uh, to the intensity of the pixels, right? So each image is composed of pixels and the pixels have a certain darkness or intensity and that's what it's called. So this is a, it's three-dimensional mapping using intensities, relative intensities of pixels, and that's how we make voxels. It's kind of cool. Uh, okay, so I think that made that a little long. What we're gonna do is, first we're gonna get a random image from the internet. Actually, not so random. Let's actually get, we already did a dog, so let's get a cool cat. Yeah, why not? <laughs> okay, I'm I'm gonna grab this one. No. Why? That's really strange. I just want to Oh, okay. Save image. Ah. <sighs> All right. Just gonna close this. And the cat is here. I'm gonna make some preliminary modifications to it. So I'm gonna open it. It's probably a large image for voxel mapping. Yeah, very large. So voxels, this type of mapping can be memory intensive 
especially if uh, the especially if the mapping and the projection is done with programs that don't really optimize the use of their graphics, the, their GPUs to the specific platform. So, and I believe Python doesn't do such much a great job doing that. So, uh, nonetheless, I will show you. And so with this one, so what we're going to do is we're going to have to resize this whole image and make it really tiny. We're just going to remove, we are removing the dark background of the cat image right now. And instead of black, I'm going to replace it with a white coloring. This is, as you can see, is not white, but it's in the background. It's just transparent. So we're going to make it white. Okay. And it is still very high res. This is just so, I just did this because I'm trying to reduce the number of voxels. And I believe that white would be equal to zeros. Okay. Um, what do we do now? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Let's make it 5% of its, no. 5% of its current size. Really tiny. Okay, save it. And we're gonna close in on it. You can see that it's very pixelated and that's gonna look really nice in for our example, just because it's pixelated. Let's make it, try to make it as square as possible. Okay, and now we're gonna crop it. Okay. You can see it's, as I mentioned, very pixelated. All right, that's our new cat. Now we're gonna create a new Python file. It's gonna create it, I'm gonna call it mapping. Mapping.py. Okay, we're gonna open it. It's gonna be empty, of course. We're gonna add some input calls some input module calls, which we did on the previous file as well. And now I'm going to show you the new, a new constructor, not constructor, structure, uh, to the voxel map library called image. Which is called, yeah, called image. And the input that it takes would be the file path for the image we want to convert to 3D. In this case, uh, the image is cat.png because we're on the same this Py Python file is in the same directory as the file, just type the same the name of the file itself and not the path. Okay. And that will basically, as I mentioned, it will just load the image into the it will take this image and just load it as a as an object. Okay. What we need to do then is we need to process it. And this make function exactly does that. It processes it into an, what I call it an intensity, intensity matrix. Now, what is an intensity matrix? It is a two by two, not two by two, sorry, a two dimensional NumPy, NumPy array, which has a transformation, a grayscale transformation. Uh, and it basically it's it uses uh, some very well established uh, transformation. Uh, I believe it's CCIR. It is actually on the documentation of of the library itself. But it takes every RGB and it transforms it into a call every every RGB uh, value from each of the pixels. It transform transforms into a single value. So that's why it makes it two D. Okay, and of course, there's actually an input here that you can you can change, and it's a resize input, right? The rest actually there's two inputs. The first would be the relative resize if it's uh, an in input of one. Uh, it would be it would just keep the image exactly the same size as it was before. If it's a uh, 0.5 then it would be, it would resize the image half of its original size. 
All right, the second uh, function is a resizing interpolation function, which is defaulted to the OpenCV2 inter area uh, built in for from OpenCV2. We'll just leave it as is. So I'll just like have the resize set as one. You also don't have to write anything. You could just keep, leave it empty, right? Because it's defaulted to one. And now after we do that, that should actually uh, create an intensity matrix. Right. An intensity matrix and the this intensity matrix is actually built in onto the image object. So it, we don't really need to, you know, return it, return anything because it's part of it already. But if you want to see it, it you just have to like type image dot intensity, and if you want to print the whole thing, I guess we can do that and show you. Right. So uh, Python mapping and it will just print that intensity matrix and of course if you're more interested in the actual structure and how it works I encourage you to read the to really go into the voxel map source code and look at you know like I've made some really useful commentaries I feel for you to understand this nonetheless we're not gonna go there so I'm just gonna you know comment this out just really wanted to show you the a very high level application of this. So after we have made or processed this matrix, so to speak, on the background, what we need to do, what we need to do is map it to three dimensions. So we map we need to map this grayscale quote unquote image. And for that it's just uh, that will return an array, of course. So we'll just define it that, that as a new variable. And it will be image dot map 3D. That's the function uh, for this image structure, uh, which does the transformation. Now there's an input here that we can define, and that would be the depth, the additional three dimensional, the additional third dimension, which would be uh, in units of number of voxels on that projected dimension. All right, so it's defaulted to five. I'll make it a little longer. I'll make it 10 voxels long. I'll make that depth 10 voxels long. And so that should do it. That should give us an array. It's actually, it's actually a third order numpy int array. in a similar way of what you've seen before. Okay. So if you want to see how that array would look, of course you can print it. And and now you can see there's no numbers like this in red intensities. Uh, you can see that now it's just a bunch of ones in three-dimensional space because these have been processed to be the third dimension. So now that we have our third order array created, we can incorporate it to our voxel map model. model. So we incorporate it by calling onto the model structure and then adding arrays at its asset input. Now, I believe that then we can draw it. And it should be as simple as that. We can run the program and it should do what we're telling it, what we want it to, to do. Just take some time to do the processing. As I mentioned, uh, this transformation can be computationally heavy. There are, okay, so there are other, you know, more advanced methodologies, but I wanted to make really this really a very simple uh, application. And you can see that the cat also the image is not tilted the right way, which is the same uh, same problem that we had for for the other uh, formerly shown application. So maybe do a transposition of this, and let's see if maybe this will give us a better. 
Okay, let's just see. Hopefully this gives us a nicer cat. Okay. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> and let's compare it. Let's compare it with the the starting image. I have gnome cat. <laughs> yeah, okay. Right, so we have our cat in 2D and we have our cat our projected cat in 3D as well here. So as I mentioned that would be that may be a nice patch to work on just uh you know working on the right uh how do you say it the right projection for images or models and that I I believe that it's uh, it would be a quite a useful improvement uh to the library uh with that being said and I believe I just shown you the, the main capabilities for this so far for this version 1.2.1 1 .1 and how to use it so that being said I'd like to start closing my video and so this library I'll, I'll be providing all the all these uh, information like the link description the links under my video description uh, you know you may fork it start my repository if you like it if you like this video there's a thumbs up button somewhere there in the in the youtube uh, app, app <laughs> in the in the webs in the site itself that you may click on uh if you like really like my content uh, what you've seen i actually i i'm trying not to say content because i found out that it's not not great if you like the the videos i'm making <laughs> um and there is also more than welcome to subscribe uh, to my channel. That being said, uh, thank you for watching and I hope you find uh, this library quite useful. Thanks.